y'all. How are you? I'm doing fine. As you can tell, I decided to put on a little bit of face. And my wing kind of got messed up, but it's okay. We'll deal. We will deal. Well, I wanted to catch you up. This is a combination video. I wanted to catch you up on a little bit of what I did last night and why I came about. And it's part of my pet peeve video. I've been watching all kinds of pet peeve videos and let me tell you, I thought of some really good doozies. But first things first, last night on Netflix, I was watching Cupcake Wars. And I thought, well, if they're able to put sour cream and yogurt and all kinds of stuff into these cupcakes, I have all kinds of stuff that I can use to make cupcakes. Well, I don't know how to make them from scratch, for se, but um, I improvised. I had a box of brownie mix that um, a friend of mine, he uses, or he bought a brownie mix about a year ago, and it was good until 2017 and I still had one package left that he bought from my niece's uh, school fundraiser. Well, he doesn't use his oven. He uses his oven as storage. So whenever he wants something baked or whatever, he buys it, brings it to me, I bake it give him the product, you know, whatnot. So I still had one package left. And I took, I took that package of brownies, which the brownies itself was Mississippi Mud Brownies. And it was called Double Chocolate Mississippi Mud Brownie. Well, I took that I added one cup of flour, and trust me, you're going to need it. I added one cup of flour, and my brother gave me a decent-sized bottle of chocolate wine, and I took the chocolate wine, and it's about a cup and a half of chocolate wine. A cup of flour it was a half a cup of cranberries it was a cup of cherries it was a tablespoon and a half of Mexican chocolate the the uh, hot cocoa is what it is and then what else did I add I added a tablespoon and a half of um, ground walnuts and then I took my scissors and cut up about five to six marshmallows and I cut up the marshmallows because I got big sized marshmallows. Well you take that, you put them in your muffin tins and you preheat your oven to 350. It takes about 43 to 45 minutes for all of that to bake. That will make up to 23 muffins or cupcakes, not muffins, sorry. I have those silicone, I think they're silicone, um, cupcake things. I don't even know what they're called. Well, I only had 12 and so I had to wait for the first batch to cool off enough for me to get them out of the pan, first of all. Let me tell you, they were yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. 
and they tasted exactly like chocolate covered cherries, the ones that you get at Christmas time. Um, they always have them for like a buck or whatever. Um, the ones that you get in the, in the uh, chocolate covered cherries, I forgot what brand they are, but they it tasted exactly like it. My husband can't stop eating them. I can't stop eating them. It is wonderful. And I meant to video it. Oh, and two eggs. Don't forget the eggs. Um, I meant to record it, but I didn't think about it until after I'm sitting there eating the cupcakes. I don't know how, I know how to make frosting, but I didn't have all the ingredients to make the frosting, so... I didn't frost them and you can take a little bit of powdered sugar and sprinkle it on top. You don't have to make it into cupcakes, but that's what I chose all because of the fact that I was watching Cupcake Wars on Netflix last night. But anywho, it was great. It was wonderful. We still have some left over. My husband had a couple for breakfast this morning with his cup of tea that he had. I had some this morning with my cup of coffee that I had. Yum. Okay, try it. Be creative. Okay, that was that. My pet peeves. My number one pet peeve is when somebody is talking and all of a sudden somebody else comes along and interrupts. Doesn't say excuse me. Doesn't say nothing. Don't have enough manners to say excuse me. I would like to say something here. Nothing. They just interrupt. I can't stand that. There's a person in my household, or not in my household, but in my family, really good at it. Every time somebody starts a conversation, they talk over you. I can't stand that. Number one pet peeve. My second pet peeve is toilet paper. If you are the last person to use that toilet paper and the roll ran out, replace the son of a bitch! Don't expect the next person to replace it. If you are a guest and everybody in the world knows that people put their toilet paper underneath the bathroom sink. All you gotta do, I, it's a little rude, but then again, it's not. Go underneath the bathroom sink, grab a roll of toilet paper, Put it on to the toilet paper holder. It's not that hard. Nowadays, they have the toilet paper where all you got to do is open up the package and put another roll on it. You don't have to unwrap it. You know, I mean, some of them are still wrapped, but it's the crappy toilet paper. But unwrap it. If they don't have a under the sink, then come out of the bathroom and you say to the homeowner, hey, I ran out of toilet paper. You need some new toilet paper in the bathroom. It only takes a couple of seconds to say those words. That's all you gotta do. That's all you gotta do. Replace the fucking toilet paper, people. Sorry, but that's just the way I feel. Okay. Toilet paper and people who talk over you, rude. The other thing <clears throat> that is a pet peeve. It don't matter what restaurant you are in. It could be a greasy spoon. It could be a fast food. It could be whatever kind of restaurant. The other pet peeve is manners. You're sitting there, you're enjoying your meal, whether it's fast food, whatever. And somebody behind you or next to you burps or farts or picks their nose. I cannot stand that. 
you know, granted, some people cannot control their bodily functions, but come on. Say excuse me. You know, if you're going to fart, if you're going to burp, say excuse me. It only takes a couple of seconds. Excuse me. Then you would know, hey, yeah, that person is only human. They farted, they burped, but say excuse me. If you're going to pick your nose, you know, kind of get the Kleenex or the napkin there and, and do it in a way. But if you got to pick it, run to the bathroom. Go pick your nose in the bathroom. That leads me to my other pet peeve. My other pet peeve is public washrooms. Now, my husband and I will occasionally run off to Lowell's to go get our paint or whatever tool that we need for the time and we don't have it at home. And I will occasionally run off and go to the public washroom. And their washroom is usually pretty well stocked. It's pretty well clean. I have never had a bad issue in that public washroom. But I, I remember... Um, this was a while back. I was sitting in one of the stalls doing my business. And there was a woman that was grunting and moaning and groaning and doing all kinds of stuff in there. And she was laying a pretty big one. At least that's the way it sounded. I did not hear that toilet flush. I did not hear the water run as she walked out the door. She just grabbed her purse, did a good hectoloogie into the garbage. At least she did that. But she didn't flush the toilet. She didn't wash her hands. Come on, that is nasty. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Flush the flippin' toilet. You're in a public washroom. The public goes in there. That's why it's called a public bathroom, people. Flush the fucking toilet. I hate that. It, it's unsanitary and it's nasty. I don't want to walk in to the bathroom thinking that, oh, I, you know, it, it's empty. I can use the bathroom. And all of a sudden there's a floater. No, that's gross. Come on. Have a little common courtesy. If you want to do that in your own home and stink up your own home, do it in your own home. But don't do it in a public bathroom. Okay. We're done with the bathroom. Now, I know that it's the in thing to wear your pants down below your ass to show off your underwear. But enough is enough, people. My biggest pet peeve is I think it looks stupid. And that's just my personal opinion. Excuse me, I have foliage or something. My personal opinion is God gave you a waist for a reason. Pull your flipping pants uh, I don't want to see your grunders. I really don't. I mean, I I have heard of the tone uh, I have heard of plumber's crack. You know, that's one thing. Bending down, you showing off your crack, maybe even the top part of your underpants. That's one thing. But to walk around with your pants looking like you got a load of shit in them and then to show me what kind of underpants you have on I don't fucking care what your underwear looks like if I wanted to see your underwear I would ask you to pull down your pants so I could see your underwear not that I'm really gonna do it but pull up your fucking pants I mean half the time 
uh, some of the kids that live in this neighborhood, and we have some decent kids in this neighborhood, but I have seen their friends come over. We have next door to us that, uh, they're not the brightest people in the bunch. And I've seen these kids. I'll be looking out my bathroom window or I'll be out in my garden and some of these kids will be out there. I mean, they're young kids that rent this house next door to me. And this kid had his pants halfway down his ass. I wanted so much to reach over my fence and pull up this kid's pants or pull them down so I could see his whole entire but, you know, so I could see all of his underwear. You could show off your underwear, show the whole thing. That's just, it's just my opinion. You know, I know if it's enough. Pull up your fucking pants. Okay, that's that. Doctor's office. The reason why people make an appointment for a certain time is because they got other things to do besides sitting around waiting for the flipping doctor to get to you. The other day, my husband and I, my husband had enough of the pain. The pain in his face was getting real bad. He ran out of uh, his pain relievers. We went to the hospital. Now, I understand it's a hospital. And you don't have to make an appointment for the hospital. But it's an emergency. The reason why they call it an emergency is because you're in pain or you did something that injured yourself. And I know that that's how you doctors get paid is by us sitting there waiting for hours. But we all have lives. We all have lives. Appointments are supposed to be done when you go into the appointment. I don't expect to sit there for two, three hours. And granted, yes, I know in the hospital y'all busy, but have more than one doctor on duty. The night that we went to the hospital, there was only one doctor on duty. The poor woman was running around like a chicken with her head cut off. I understand you're busy, but we sat in that room for two and a half hours. We got there at 10.15. We didn't leave until almost 12.15, 12.30, sometime around there. It was quicker to get his prescription at Walgreens than it was sitting in the hospital. I mean, we got waited on, but then we had to sit in one of the rooms, the examination room, for two and a half hours. I thought, good Lord, what is, you know, have more than one doctor on duty. It's the emergency room. You should have more than one doctor. You never know when you're going to come across <sighs> that irritates the crap out of me. And I'm sure it irritates the crap out of other people, too. But more than one doctor. It would solve that problem. And let me see. If you are going to tell somebody, I will be there in a bit. Okay, in my mind, in a bit is 15, 20, maybe even 45 minutes. I'll be there in a bit. I have a family member and I don't really want to say names or... I have a family member that is really good at that. Really good at that. So, I'll be there in a little bit. Now, to me, a little bit is, like I said, 10, 15, maybe even a half hour, 45 minutes. That, to me, is a little bit. That's acceptable. But when you tell that person that you're going to be there in a little bit, and then you don't come until the end of the night, 
when I'm ready to go to bed, that pisses me off. That's a big pet peeve. Do it in a little bit or don't do it at all. For now, the last pet peeve that I have is if you make a promise to somebody, you say, hey, I promise I will be there or I promise I'll give you this or I promise whatever the promise is. Keep the bloody fucking promise. Promise me something and actually follow through with it. Don't tell me that you're going to promise me something and then never do it. Follow through. That's all I'm asking you to do. Follow through with it. That's why... If I know way deep down inside, wait a minute, before I promise you this, can I absolutely do this or can I absolutely give you this? And I will never do a promise that I know in my heart I cannot keep. If I promise you something, that means I know I can keep it. I know I can do what it is that I'm promising you. Otherwise. I don't make that promise because I have had my feelings hurt. I have had my heart broken by people telling me that they'll promise. I promise I will do this for you. And then they never follow through with it. Once again, I do have a family member. I have a few people in my life that have done that. They never follow through. So, for now, I think, oh, there's one more, maybe two. Um, I live down a dead-end street. Typically, it's an extremely quiet neighborhood, laid-back neighborhood. Neighbors never really bother you. People never really bother you. But, and typically you would think that a dead-end street would not be all that busy with traffic. Usually you know that it's towards the end of the week because starting Wednesday, the traffic down our street gets really busy for some odd reason. There are kids in this neighborhood, and we do have stray cats and dogs that run around here, and occasionally a wolf or whatever, but slow the frick down. Just because there's no cop that sits at the end of the road doesn't mean that one of us ain't going to pick up a phone. We all know what phones are for. We all know the phone number to the cops. So, slow the frick down, people. The other day, in fact, this morning, in, in, in too, the other day I'm sitting on the porch, I'm minding my own business halls, and zoom, this car goes flying down. Now, at the end of the road, like I said, I live on a dead-end road, and at the end of the road is the railroad track. You go a little too fast, you're going to go your ass over the railroad track. And there has been a lot of accidents down at the, not at the end of the road, but over the railroad tracks because people are stupid. Some people don't pay attention or they just don't care. But this morning, once again, I'm out having my coffee, smoking my cigarette, minding my own business, watching the videos here on YouTube. And this car comes flying down the road. Had to be doing about 45, maybe 50, whoops, flying down the road. Now, I'm glad I didn't decide to go out and get my mail at that time because I would have gotten my ass run over. 
they dropped off somebody and took off and went flying down the road. Is it really all that necessary to show off what kind of power you have in that car by flying up and down the road? Uh, no, because if somebody gets hit or something gets hit, are you going to stop? Probably not. Music in the cars. Now, I, on occasion, if I'm out on the highway, am guilty of my music being turned up. But when you are uh, in the city, there is no need for your music to be that loud and having your music booming. Boom, 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 boom. Who in the hell are you trying to impress? And how are you going to be able to hear if an ambulance goes by or the fire trucks or the police? How are you going to be able to hear it? God knows you're not really paying any attention to the road. You're just listening to your music and that crap that y'all listen to. I mean, I have nothing against rap. Don't get me wrong. My niece listens to it and some of it is okay. Some of it does make sense. But does it have to be that bloody loud? Okay, you're on the highway. There's a little bit of a difference. Not much, but a little bit of a difference. You're not in the city. You're going 70 miles per hour. Who the hell cares what you are or how loud your music is? You know? But if you're in the city... And you're going from your house to Kmart. There is no need for your radio to be up that loud. Where the whole fucking block can hear it. No need. So, those are my pet peeves. So, I do thank you, Away Girl for doing the collaboration of pet peeves. Keep it up. Let's keep it up. This is great. Getting it all off of the chest. I like it. All right. Be good to one another. Love one another like you would want somebody to love you. And above all, love yourself. And be happy. Peace out, y'all.